So we're going to start in the rear first because it's the easiest. The front is the hardest just because there's so much more to take off. So we went ahead and pulled both sides of our axles out, took all that apart, took our dry shaft off. So the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and take my caps off. And as you can see, there is a stamp on each cap and there's a stamp on the housing. Um, that way you know where they go. Pretty self-explanatory, there's a C right here and right here, and there's nothing on this side. So we know this cap goes here and this cap goes here. Just gonna lay this on the rear end. So I know that goes there. And I can tell you right now, there is not a whole lot of preload on this axle because it's getting ready to fall out. Uh, there's gonna be shims on the outside. You want to take note on where them came from Because that will get us started when we go to put in our new setup All right now we got the pinion nut broke loose we want to go ahead and leave a couple threads on there and then take a punch and a hammer and pound that pinion through Now that you punch your pinion through the other side, you can go ahead and punch out your races. Hang on to the one that just flew out this way. I'm getting ready to punch the other one out that way. All right, now you have both races punched out. The one that come out of this side right here, you wanna go ahead and grind a bunch of material off of this until you can get it to slide back and forth with a little bit of resistance. That's gonna be our setup race. Now the reason why we need a setup race is, okay, so I don't have a clamshell puller and this is totally acceptable. You can, shim behind the race um, there's no problem with doing that and i haven't had a problem either way it's acceptable um, i've seen a lot of people not even mess with the pinion depth and use race depth to set their pinion um, this is a lot easier and it'll help you in your backyard if you don't have a clamshell puller because they're like 300 bucks so remember i don't care if you got to cut the bearing off of that thing to get this I measured the old pinion shim and I put that same amount behind the race because it gets you super close and I'm usually only adding a couple thou to get it perfect. That old race that come out of here, make sure you grind it down a little bit to where it fits snug back in here. If I need to come out some more with it, I can take this out and shim behind the race. Um, perfectly fine. I see professionals do it all the time. Um, like I said, you can shim more behind the pinion, but I don't have a clamshell puller. I take the old pinion nut and I file it down because it has a crimp on it so it don't mar up the new pinion. And I make sure it goes on nice and easy. That way I can use it for setup. Then I go ahead and I take the old shims on the outside of the carrier and I mark non-ring gear side and ring gear side. And I go ahead and I measure them and write down the uh, measurement. That way I know what the old shim pack was. And I can do math from there to get me right in the area of where I need to be on the new one if I have to. Then I go ahead and get the new stuff out, lay it out all over the table. This is the new pinion nut there. comes with everything you need. Um, I have a video on all this. 
So we're just going to unbox it today, open it up, get everything sorted out so it's out in the room. So I'm going to go ahead and measure all the shims, lay them all out so I can just grab them. I'm going to write down the size on them and it'll be a lot easier when I need to go make a shim pack. And I'll just go ahead and measure the um, pinion shims. We're not going to be using them, but make sure you wipe all the shims off of debris and oil and then measure them. Like I said, I'm going to be shimming behind the race instead of the pinion. It's perfectly fine. I'm just going to go ahead and write on them. That way, if I ever need to use them, I'll have it. And then I'm going to go ahead and take the ring gear off, which is super easy. Loosen up the bolts and peck it with a dead blow. And it usually comes off pretty simple. Nothing too hard. Then I go ahead and pick it up off of there. I file the new one down to make sure there isn't any burrs on it. And I also do the new carrier that way if you have one. Even do the old carrier that way. But I want to make sure there's no burrs or anything that can make this thing set cockeyed on there. Throw it in the oven. Let it expand a little bit. And then I go ahead and pop it on the carrier. Should pop right up on there. Stick a couple bolts in it. Run it up. And you should be good to go. It usually sucks up on there pretty nice and then I back all the bolts out and put Loctite in it. It's pretty self-explanatory and then I just put them on there, back them out, put them on there and then I torque them down. I have a vise and I torque them down. Throw the pinion in the freezer, throw the bearing in the oven at 400, drops right down on the pinion, no problem. Don't need a press. Do the same thing with the carrier, I cut the race off, and honestly, I just throw the bearings in the oven, heat them up at 400 for 20 minutes, and they just push right down on the carrier. Now we got all that stuff done, I'm going to go ahead and throw the pinion in with the uh, measured shims behind the race. I have a setup race, like I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. video. And then I'm going to go ahead and put the yoke on, peck it on, tighten it down until the bearing has a little bit of resistance. You just want a little bit of resistance so you can check pattern. And then I'm going to go ahead and throw the carrier in. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure the shims are back in there, tighten it up the caps with a little drill, check backlash, make sure I'm in spec, and then I'm going to go ahead and run a pattern. Now in this video I'm going to show you two different ways to run a pattern. Both ways are acceptable. Um, I'm On the rear I'm going to go ahead and do it by hand. You will get the same results um, just to prove to you guys that you can do it both ways. So when we do the front end I'll show you the other way you can do it. But I'm, as you can see here, I'm putting gear marking compound on it. If you don't have any, it's hard to find. You can use mustard or anti-seize. Um, I'll just rotate it by hand. There should be a little bit of resistance on this thing. Should, shouldn't be no crunchiness, though. Shouldn't be no binding. It should spin freely, but with a little bit of resistance. And I'm going to go ahead and take the bearing caps back off because I got my pattern dialed in to where it needs to be. I took the carrier in and out probably like four or five times to add shims. And now I'm going to go ahead and pound the main race in instead of using this setup race with the shims behind it. Putting the crush sleeve on, I'm going to go ahead and stub the pinion through. So we got bearing, spacer, and then washer in here. Now a lot of people are going to ask me why I'm pounding the yoke back off. That's because I went ahead and seated that clearance vent bearing. And now I'm pounding it back off so I can pound the seal in. That way you're not damaging the seal or anything. It's already seated and ready to go. So that's why I did that. As you can see I'm using a dead blow hammer. Put a little silicone around the seal just in case there is some imperfections in the axle. And honestly, this seal goes right in, no problem. You might have to fight for a little bit to get started, but once it goes in there, I just peck around it 
the dead blow and it goes right in. Now you can see I'm putting the yoke back on, tighten it down, crush that sleeve. Done setting up the uh, crush sleeve and it is in spec. I like to go in between all the information spec wise will be in the description below. But now we can go ahead and throw the carrier in and start putting this thing back together. All right, now we have the pattern perfect. We have the pinion and the yoke and everything on the seal and everything torqued down the crush sleeve. We can go ahead and throw our carrier back in. And uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you had it in and out four or five times to get the backlash and the pinion depth right, you will understand how to put this thing in. Make sure you put the caps in the right place. Um, mine are marked, so I didn't have to mark them. And that's basically what I'm doing here is putting everything back together and tightening it down to spec with a torque wrench. And that is basically all you do. Add some oil and put the axles and stuff back in. And that's it for the re-gear on the rear end. So we're going to move to the front end. And uh, it's a little bit harder because you got to take a little bit more stuff out. But it's not that bad. look closely um, there is some stampings in the housing this one's G and this one's a size a sideways G and as you can see on the bearing caps it has the same imprint so I'm not going to mess around beating numbers in this because I don't need to because I already know where they go because it's already stamped All right, so when it comes to my my particular front end, my shims are on the outside of the differential. So yours might be on the inside of the bearing, but mine are on the outside. So what you wanna do is make sure you memorize where these shims go. Stick a wrench right here, put a little ratchet on the back side, and just hold onto your carrier. And it'll slide right out. Got my shim. All right, so now we got the pinion off. We need to get these spider gears out and put them in this diff and then put the bearings on. Um, went ahead and sprayed those brake clean. I'm gonna hit it again. But uh, there's a pin right here. See the roll pin? Pound the roll pin down. Now 
make the ring gear. We're gonna go ahead and back all the bolts off, put Loctite on them, put the bearings on. All right, we gotta replace the axle tube seals, which is pretty easy. I just use a screwdriver, pry until it comes out. It goes right in, no problem. I use a dead blow hammer because as you can see, it's in seated. When you see that silver ring, that means it's back in there. I use a dead blow hammer because you can get more of a swing on it. Now we just got to do this side. You don't have to use a crush sleeve. Sleeve. Um, you just want to get it to where it's close with your hand, where it's tight, has some resistance. You go too tight, you'll smash the bearings. That way we can run a pattern and see where we're at. Now what I like to do when installing the carrier is using this shim on the driver's side and then I just go ahead and stick it in like this as you can see that carrier went in super loose so what I'll do is Take a screwdriver and put right in here. If you put that screwdriver in there and put your dial indicator on there and get you close, you can measure your gap right here and that'll get you in the range to run a pattern. That's what I did right here. X with a set of st uh, shim stacks. So what I'm gonna do is pull it back out. I already did my measurement with the caliper meter. Um, it's not hard, like I said. So like I said, what you wanna do is put your carrier and shim on the driver's side and pound your screwdriver in there till you get the right amount backlash. Use your dial indicator to confirm that. And as you can see, I'm between six and 10. So what I'm gonna do is make up a st uh, shim stack. So I made my shim stack so i'm gonna pull the carrier back out and put this back in All right, so I'm pretty sure that worked out great. Put the bearing caps on, just snug them up, and then run a pattern. So we're sitting right at six. We need to take a shim out, but it's good enough to run a pattern. So we got the backlash set where I want it. The gear pattern, pattern as perfect as you're gonna get it. So after you have your pattern perfect, you take the carrier back out, take the setup race out, and pound in the new brace with your shims that you have calculated for the perfect pinion depth. So we just got done setting up the uh, crush sleeve and it is in spec. Now we can go ahead and throw the carrier in and start putting this thing back together. Now it's time to reinstall everything. You want to go ahead and put your carrier back in, put your shims back in. I've had this carrier in and out probably like six or seven times to get everything perfect. Every time you change the pinion depth, the backlash will need change, so keep that in mind. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so, I've had it in and out. You're going to be good at taking the carrier in and out. 
and make sure there is some preload on this carrier. All right, so we got the backlash set where I want it, and I got the gear pattern pretty much perfect as you're going to. I got the gear pattern pattern as perfect as you're going to get it. Let's 